Hey, Sean Chance here, and do a quick battle plan for Monday, December 9th, and I'm going to do it on Slash ES, which is the S&P 500, and the other indices that you can find on Nadex, and I'm going to start here on Slash ES, and on Sunday nights, I actually like to just recap uh, looking at the daily time frame. The daily chart is what I consider the eagle view uh, of the market, because we're going to fly over this market like an eagle. You can see this is almost a year's worth of data here, and understanding what's going on in larger time frames can help us of what's likely to come right where we have been can help us on where price could likely uh, be going and so just a little bit of a recap if we look obviously we you know starting uh, you know pretty much literally January 1st this was a severely severely uh, bullish chart right market massively uh, surged April springtime cycle down, cycle up, cycle down, cycle up, cycle down, cycle up. And we did have a mini cycle last week. It wasn't a huge sell off, but this was a pretty one of the largest uh, bull moves to the upside. I believe it's like since 2011. Um, it was in terms of largest moves in terms of there was not two days of red, right? It, if from you look right about here was the last time two days of red. And then the bulls, literally just one of the most painstaking, low volatility, just up, 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 up. And then it finally got two days of red right there. So that right there had not happened since 2011. So I was saying that that was, that was one of the most awkward moves to the upside I had ever seen. Turns out it actually was the most awkward move to the up, upside that I have ever seen. Finally, though, these bears started to catch a little bit of volatility. We sold off pretty large, and, I, and you say I say large, large is relative, but the market actually finally got a significant pullback to the downside, and then the bull saw value, and we cycled back up. We kind of retraced back up into that all-time high. We caught a, uh, some good jobs report, so we had good fundamentals, and so that's kind of what pushed this market higher on Friday. And with that strong jobs uh, number, right, we saw these bulls kind of surge back to all-time highs, roughly about that 3150-ish and about eight points off obviously there's supply here and we're starting to see a little bit of weakness right now so we're kind of at the decision time in terms of you know you form a top retrace down and then you go for that retrace so now it's kind of decision time are these bears going to be able is this kind of the the start of something kind of following lower i would imagine kind of the large large target for these bears i'm not specifically saying definitely not tomorrow but kind of looking for possible large targets for these bears to the downside is going to be around uh, 3,000. And so that's where these bears are going to want to dump this chart. If we do see a massive dump in this market, 3,000, that's kind of going to be uh, the solid target there. Moving to the four-hour chart, right? The four-hour chart is what I call the bird's eye view. So we just looked at an eagle. Now we're going to zoom farther down into a bird's view. And so this is this chart, I would say, this is the single most important chart for a day trader in terms of what is the bias here? Are we overbought, oversold, or at equilibrium? You can see the all-time high, massive LARP, or quick cycle to the downside. We catch support, right? Oversold, we cycle back up. And as of like right now, as I'm speaking, this market is trying to kind of cycle back down uh, it is definitely this market clearly is more overbought than it is oversold so it has plenty of room to cycle back down tomorrow and if it does want to grind higher there is going to be a little bit of supply here i mean i say little i mean this is all time high so this is the only price action on this chart since the beginning of time uh, up there uh, i would say a pretty good little target back to the downside would be right around 31.20 and then, of course, we talk with uh, 3100, right? So 3100 has turned into a, a nice little uh, magnet on this chart the last month. Okay, and so that's kind of where these bears are going to want to go. And that's possibly where I'd want to be looking. I'm going to move here to the 15-minute chart. But that's where I'd want to be looking for pullback buy triggers if I do buy this chart. So moving here, 15-day, 15 15-minute 15 plot chart, no more indicators. And what I'm looking for here is just structure. I'm looking for the best places to buy, the best places to sell. I'm looking for support, resistance, supply, and demand zones. And what I always do is I start exactly where price is, and then I start planning and visualizing. What am I going to do or not do at every single level if this market does go higher? And then what am I going to do or not do at every single level if we see this market start dumping uh, to this structure down here? So let's first talk about if we uh, rally higher. I, we just kind of talked about how this is the all-time high supply. 
Bear, the Bulls barely missed it, and then the Bears saw value, obviously, as you can see. So if we do start creeping up here, there will be all-time high supply around that plus 0.5. So I'm not totally against looking for change control sell triggers right there since the Bears have already proven that they see value there, okay? But here's the catch. If these Bulls uh, don't catch change control here and they break plus 0.5 into all brand new all-time highs, I'm not going to be trading up here. I'm not saying that you can't. You can do whatever the heck you want to do. I always just want to be trading where there's structure to the left, whether I'm buying or selling. And there's obviously there's no structure since the beginning of time above 31.58. So I'll look elsewhere at some other chart where there is better structure if this breaks, okay? Now to the downside. One thing I want to talk about in this market that we saw on Friday is here's that jobs report spike, okay? Now, nothing, nothing is 100% in the market, but more times than not, price loves to get sucked back to original, where volume spikes originate from, right? The original volume spike or where, the, where it originates from is what I like to say, right? So it's basically what's called a spike and then it ledge, spike and ledge back, right? It's a pattern that you can uh, look up on our YouTube channel or Facebook group, Spike and Ledge. And so obviously if these bears start dumping, we know where they're going to want to take it back to, right? And it, it, this happens because it's a self-fulfilling. Everyone in the dog also knows this pattern. And obviously there's a lot of volume right there. And so that's why everyone just makes it go back there. It's self-fulfilling, okay? And so that, uh, talking about that, I wanted to mention that because it comes into play looking for a possible buy trigger at the negative 0.5 tomorrow. I, me personally, I'm going to hold off looking for a buy trigger there. Not saying that you, right? I'm not saying that it won't hold. I just don't see, it's a, for me anyways, if I buy this chart tomorrow, I want to be pulling back into here, right? Pull back, not probably likely a bullish uh, channel there, trend line if you want to look at that. And then obviously these bears would complete uh, that spike coming back. And then we got a negative one deviation, Tuesday POC. That's where I'd want to be looking for pullbacks. But before that happens, another reason why I wanted to lead with that is because instead of looking for possible buy triggers at the negative 0.5, I could also look for possible breakouts, right? So knowing that the bears want to go there, if they are breaking through this, obviously this is a strong move to the downside. You can possibly try and ride it lower with either touch brackets or traditional futures, right? So you would break out and then find their lower highs. Lower highs, that's key. You could use a quarter deviation for, for, for mental stop. You could use a quarter deviation for first take profit, and then you can lock and trail for those targets uh, into there. If these bears really, really dump tomorrow, there will be structure down here for either negative one and a half and or negative two plays, okay? Moving to slash in Q, it's very similar. Uh, I would say the difference on this is there is actually better supply structure around the plus 0.5, multiple structures around that plus 0.5. So I like that for looking for first sell trigger. If it breaks, I won't be trading up there. Same thing to the downside though. You can see where the spike originated from, roughly the negative one. So this actually has, that level has multiple origination spikes, right? Origination, origination, spike there, spike there, quite a bit of volume there. So there's a lot going on around, right? Just around that 83.20, which puts us on that Tuesday POC negative one. So it's kind of the same concept. Not saying that you can't look for buy triggers there. Me personally, I'm just going to hold off. Could be an opportunity for breakout, okay? And you can ride that lower. And then, or if I do buy this chart, I'd want to be pulling back into here. And there will be structure for negative one and a half and or negative two plays. Slash YM actually has just a little bit of structure at plus one. It's not the best, but if we get massive bulls, at least this chart has the best structure uh, to the upside. You can see as far as to the downside, it's all pretty much the same there. And then slash RTY is a little different. There's actually no structure to the plus 0.5, but RTY isn't at all time highs. It's actually only at a yearly high. So if you go out to a larger time frame, there will be structure at the plus 0.5, but we're talking like five years, right? I mean, you got to go way back to see structure up here, but it is at a year. Actually, sorry about uh, so one year, almost, almost um, oh, over a year, obviously, but we're at a yearly high. And so uh, if this market does surge higher, I won't be trading up there. Uh, but it's the same concept to the downside in terms of um, I would hold off on the negative 0.5. 
if I were to buy this, I'd want to be pulling back into here or break out. And then there's that origination spike sitting pretty much right on the negative one. There will be structure down here for negative one and a halfs and or negative two plays. So message me if you have any questions and don't forget, we also have deviations on the four major Forex pairs. You can see that right here. Okay, we also have value area and deviations on crude oil. So there's nine charts as far as on the BTG's Thinkorswim chart link. And then of course, this one's empty for anything else that you wanna trade, such as Aussie yen, pound yen, euro yen, dollar cad, dollar Swiss, or anything else like that. So message me if you have any questions. Take pictures of all of your trades and post them in the group and in the chat room so that you can get feedback from me and from others.